Still Mrs. Dayton's foreman, or are you just her night watchman? Uh, trouble with my eyes, Cartwright. Just give them a rest. I'd say you're having a lot of trouble with them. I just rode up your east fence line. It's still shot through with dry rot. Lane, I told you about it three weeks ago. Why haven't you done something about it? Uh, just because you're courting the wind every week don't give you no right to give orders around here. It's going to be a lot easier fixing your fence than chasing stock all over the Nevada Territory. Now, why don't you worry about the widow and let me worry about the stock? I don't know what's eating you, but it's obvious you're not getting the work done around here, so why don't you just pick up your wages and move on, huh? Uh, Cartwright, why don't you go on up to the house and hold your little woman's knitting yarn for her? <laughs> or whatever it is you two do together. <laughs> Adam, this is terrible. When he wakes up, he's going to wonder who hit him with an axe handle. He's not getting the work done around and he doesn't know how to keep a civil tongue in his head. I told him to pick up his wages and leave. Is that right, Mrs. Dayton? Mr. Cartwright running the ranch now? Get your things together. I'll have your money. Well, Adam, are you? Am I what? Are you running this ranch? Take it? Sorry, Laurie. You should have been fired weeks ago. It happens that I don't like to fire people. Laura, I've been looking over the place. A third of your fence is down. Barn roof is in need of repair before the rains come. Stock looks as though Doc Stone hasn't taken a look at it all summer. The neglect around here is shameful. Well, you must know it takes money to replace fences and re-roof barns. I have a, a ranch payment to meet in two weeks. Let me help. If you don't get this place straightened out, Laura, you're not going to be in any shape to face the fall roundup or, or the winter. I don't want charity. Now, look, Laura, it isn't charity. 
Just a loan. A business matter entirely. I conduct my business matters with Mr. Weems at the bank. Laura, when was the last time you inspected this place? You know, a ranch doesn't run itself. You gotta watch it, look after it all the time. Well, you seem to forget that I have a house to look after and a child to take care of. How much do you think a woman can do by herself? I know. I'll get you another foreman. Adam, you just don't understand, do you? Sally's mother says she wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he doesn't marry you. Well, Sally's mother is obviously being a bit premature. Adam's interest in me seems to be largely business. But if we need the fence fixed and the roof fixed and you like him and he likes you, why won't you let him help? Dear Peggy... Well, sometimes people just get a little bit mixed up. <laughs> old banker Weems had a good breakfast this morning. And no arguments with his wife. <laughs> Them bankers can stare down a rattlesnake if they ask for a loan. Well, I'm going to do my best to charm him. And if he agrees to extend my credit, you boys can start cutting the new fence post right away. I'll watch out for Peggy the rest of the day. Maybe take her horse back and if she wants. Pardon me. I'm looking for a Mrs. Frank Dayton. I'm Mrs. Dayton. Uh, this is Dave Wilkins, one of my hands. Howdy. Howdy. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm Ward Bannister, Mrs. Dayton. I was a friend of your late husband. Oh? What is it you want? Well, some months ago, Frank gave me an envelope for safekeeping. I, uh, didn't hear about his death till about a week ago. Or I'd have sent it much sooner. I see. It's a $10,000 insurance policy on Frank's life. Well, I can hardly believe it. I had no idea. Well, it, it, it was very thoughtful of you to ride out all this way to bring it to me. Well, as it happens, I didn't come out here just for this. I'm riding on into Carson City. Huh. You don't happen to be riding into town, do you, ma'am? Yes, I am. And this will make the ride much more enjoyable. Well, I'd like to ride along with you, if you don't mind. Well, uh, the insurance agent in San Francisco told me that he needs an affidavit and uh, several questions have got to be answered. And... Well, I can explain these questions to your lawyer, if you like. And... I would appreciate that very much. It'd be my pleasure. <laughs> I hardly know where to begin to thank you. I don't mention it. It's my pleasure. Uh, what are your plans in Carson City? Oh, nothing special. I just thought I'd try to catch on to some ranch in the area. You hardly have the look of a ranch hand. Oh, now, these hands have done an awful lot more than deal three-card Monty, Mrs. Dayton. Well, about the only thing ranching does for hands is grow a crop of calluses. Well, these didn't grow anything else until I was more than 20. Well, would you like to come to work for me? I'd sure like the chance. All right. 
Let's try it. Um, but I don't think it would be very practical to wrestle down a calf in those clothes. <laughs> you know, I agree with you. I still have some supplies to order. While I do that, you can order some work clothes. Fine. I'll walk you over to the store. I have to send a wire to a friend of mine in Carson City telling him to stay on. Send this off right away, please. Keep the change. Be there in an hour, mister. Shake hands. Shake hands. If Sally Jenks pony can shake hands, you ought to be able to, you dumb old thing. Now shake hands. No, you can't have any sugar until you mind. Please shake hands. Now shake hands. Hi, Mother. Hello, Peggy. You been a good little girl? Yes, Mother. Oh, thank you. Uh... Peggy, this is Mr. Bannister. Mm How -hmm. do you do, Peggy? Hi. Oh, the, the bunkhouse is uh, over next to the barn. Fine. Well, thanks again, Mr. Dayton. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Who's Mr. Bannister, Mother? Well, he was a friend of your father's. He's going to work for us now as a ranch hand. Maybe he can help me with Traveler. Sally Jane's pony could shake hands, but dumb old Traveler won't learn now. Oh. Well, maybe if you're patient with him, he'll learn too. Well, he's sure being dumb about it. But anyway, he's faster than Sally's pony. <laughs> tell you what you do. You get yourself a short little stick and you put it in your left hand. Then you hold out your right hand and you say, shake hands, traveler. And then you take that stick and you give him a smart rap right behind the right hoof. And you'd be surprised how fast dumb old traveler is going to turn into young, smart traveler. Really? Try it. Thanks, Adam. Hi, Peg. Hi. Call. Who's the new man I saw at the bunkhouse? His name is Ward Bannister. He was a friend of Frank's in San Francisco. Oh, a friend of Frank's, huh? Yes. Frank did have some friends. Here. What's he doing here? Oh, he came to give me a $10,000 life insurance policy that Frank had left with him. You'll probably be interested to know that I've already ordered the new fencing and the new roofing, and I've hired a new foreman. What kind of experience has this Mr. Bannister had? Well, he has done a lot of work with cattle. Does that qualify him as a foreman? 
Dave Wilkins is the new foreman. Mr. Bannister is the new hired hand. Now, if either Dave or I are dissatisfied with his work, at the end of the first week, he rides out again. Any more questions? No. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some mending to do. Oh, or maybe you'd rather stay and watch. I may have been doing that wrong all this time, too. The reason I came over was, uh, well, if you could possibly be ready, I would take you and Peggy to church and on a picnic tomorrow. Of course we can be ready. If you think you can refrain from criticizing the sermon. I'll do my very best. Good. Sounds like a she-wolf. Many wolves around here? Oh, there's one denned up there in the hills with some pups. Who's this Adam fella? One of the card rights. Mrs. is kind of sweet on him. Kid's crazy about him. Well, except for being made foreman, old lady Luck is sure going to sour on me today. And you better deal me in. She's been sweet as honey to me. One of you fellas lend me some rifle ammunition? Well, there's a whole box of it inside. Uh, help yourself. Why? Well, I thought I'd take a crack at that wolf in the morning. Hey, uh, that'd sure be a good way to get rid of the Sunday morning do-nothings. Would you mind if we went with you? Oh, sure. Fine. attention to Reverend Holmes' sermon. Well, and just because I spent half the time looking at you doesn't mean I don't know what the sermon was all about. <laughs> uh, the picnic hamper is in the spring house. It won't take Peggy and me more than a few minutes to get changed. And what are you all grinning about? For you. For me? Oh, thank you, Mr. Bannister. What are you going to call him, Peggy? I'll call him Prince. I've always wanted a puppy called Prince. Adam, uh, this is Ward Bannister, Adam Cartwright. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Cartwright? Laurie, you know that's a wolf cub. <laughs> Boy, dear, he kept complaining all last night how the mother kept him awake. So this morning, we went out to get her. Wasn't easy getting that little critter out, either. Turn a van as frisky as a kitten. Well, that was a fool thing to do. Oh, well, why was it a fool thing to do, Adam? Well, Laura, the pup is fun now, but when it grows up, it'll be what it is, a wolf. <laughs> You're going to be gone for a few hours. I suggest that you take the cub back and put him back where you found him. Any way you want him, Miss Cartwright. I don't want him taken back. I want him to stay here. Please, Adam. He's so little and helpless. Peggy. He's got to go back sooner or later. It'd be better if you do it now before you really get to like him. But I like him now, and I'm going to keep him. Peggy. <laughs> I'll go talk to Peggy, ma'am. I don't want to cause any trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Laura, you're not going to let her keep the pup. It'll grow up to be a dangerous animal. I know, Adam. I know. I don't know how to run a ranch. I don't know who to fire. I don't know who to hire. 
The fences are falling down and the roof's leaking and, and the stock is unattended. And now I can't even make the right decision about whether my child should have a pet or not. Well, Adam, if I'm so hopeless, why do you bother? Why do you even bother? Two and a half percent is a very fair return, Mr. Payton. You'll find that though money is a hard master, it's a willing servant. You must make your capital work for you, that's... Well, thank you very much for your advice, Mr. Weems. Oh, uh, this is Ward Bannister, my new hand. How do you Mr. do, Mr. Weems. Bannister? Everything all right, Mrs. Dayton? Yes, including a nice little lecture on the value of money. Now, I still have some things to do. Have you finished your errands? Yes, ma'am. Oh, would you mind driving me? I may as well do these things while we're in town. Not at all. Where to first? Bannister? Yes. <laughs> Bless my soul, it is. How are you, Ward? Fine, fine. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Dayton. She's my employer. How do you do? Well, a pleasure, Mrs. Dayton. Ward, what are you up to now? I'm a ranch hand. And a very good one. <laughs> Ward was a very good timber cruiser for me some years ago, Mrs. Dayton. The problem was to keep him tied down in one place. <laughs> well, I must hurry along. Nice to see you, Ward. And a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Dayton. As a matter of fact, why can't we have lunch at the hotel? I hate dining alone. Can't feel I'm not particularly dressed for a restaurant. Well, possibly you can convince him. I'll be pushing along to San Francisco in a day or two, and it may be another five years before we meet. You don't have to worry, Ward. The people in the Virginia City Hotel are quite used to men in trail clothes. All right, fine, Miss Camp. Half an hour, then? Fine. He seems like a pleasant man. I suppose the least I could do is get a shave. I'll meet you back here in a half hour, then. I'll meet you at the hotel. At the hotel. Good. I was hoping you'd think to stop by. Where's the girl? Shopping. I'm getting a shave. She wasn't uh, suspicious when you told her that you were a friend of her husband's. From what I gathered from the ranch hands, uh, he didn't talk too much about his trips to San Francisco. <laughs> I can understand why. Oh, there you. was a lot more pleasure than business. <laughs> who was she talking to at the bank? The president. She seemed to me to be a careful old codger. Uh, that's probably who she'll be checking with. I'm rather glad I was careful to pick something he'd approve. And what would that be? <laughs> the San Francisco Monterey Railroad. San Francisco, Monterey. I never heard of it. <laughs> Neither had anyone else until two months ago. It's Jay Banyan's promotion. For old time's sake and a cut of the proceeds, he let me in on it. <laughs> Think old Weems will go for this? Oh, I'm sure of it. Jay's been clever about this one. Right-of-way surveys, negotiations for land. <laughs> Banker Weems has probably read all about it in the financial news. But we've got to be quick. What's the next step? Just follow my lead. Here's to our pigeon, who's about ready to be plucked. <laughs> I just want to say one thing, Laura. What? I'm sorry. I hadn't realized what a pleasure it was calling on you, knowing that I was welcome. Well, the running bees always welcome calls from neighbors. That's not exactly what I meant. Would you have lunch with me today? I've been an idiot, and I realize it. I hadn't guessed the Cartwright men would confess to a thing like that. Well, it takes time. But it sinks in. I already have a luncheon engagement today, Adam. I'm sorry. I really am. But I don't have any plans for the evening. Good. 
I'll see you tonight. Those were the good old days, all right. <laughs> We were a little younger in those days, I guess. At least I was. You haven't aged. Uh, uh, do you mind, Mrs. Dayton? No, not at all. Ward, no, may no. I have a cigar? No, thanks. <laughs> Ward, now, you occasionally showed a knack for making money in the past. Did you ever hang on to any of it? Just long enough to get me to the card table, Mr. Canfield. Too bad. I agree. Well, why do you ask? Well, I'm involved in a most unusual enterprise in San Francisco. The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. The shares are $100 apiece, which is a sum, of course, but the value should well double itself within a very few months. Well, if Mrs. Dayton will advance me three months' salary, uh, I might just be able to handle one share. <laughs> <laughs> Don't treat it lightly, my friend. This is a most unusual opportunity. Did you say the stock would double its value in a few months? Well, I should say there's very little chance of it doing otherwise with the important people behind it. Why do you ask? Mr. Canfield, I uh, might be interested in an investment. Well, good. <laughs> a couple of shares will give you the satisfaction of having been part of an important contribution to the West. Now then, Ward... No, I would be interested in uh, more than a couple of shares. Uh, could I get as many as 80? <sighs> but that would be uh, $8,000, my dear young lady. Yes, I know. I assume you have a financial advisor. A financial advisor? Well, I suppose Mr. Weems at the bank could help me. <laughs> well, then... Why don't you just glance through this, Mrs. Dayton? And then, if you're still interested, we'll call on Mr. Weems. All right. <laughs> Peggy, maybe we should let Prince go. Well, he doesn't seem to be very happy. But he shouldn't have been spanked for killing those chickens, Mother. Mm. He'll get over it. I suppose he shouldn't have been. After all, it's the nature of a wolf to kill chickens, isn't it? But he will get over it. I know he will. Well, let's hope so. Now, you go get ready for bed. I'll be in a few minutes. Yes, Mother. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. I had just this moment decided to go and see if you're in the bunkhouse. Oh, have you got a chore you'd like me to attend to, maybe? Oh, no. Uh, your friend, Mr. Canfield. Uh, have his ventures always been successful? His ventures have been very successful. Mr. Canfield's a very clever man. He seems to be. Can't make up your mind whether or not to invest, right? Well, $8,000 is a considerable sum of money. Wish I had it. Mr. Canfield's given me several opportunities, but I uh, just never can handle them. It sounds like wonderful investment. You don't have too much time to make up your mind, do you? Remember, uh, Mr. Canfield's got to leave sometime tomorrow. Well, good night, ma'am. Ward, uh, I called Dave Wilkins in to, uh, to compliment him on the wonderful job he's been doing, and, well, he said it was your doing. Well, that was mighty nice of him. Uh, you do like the life here, don't you? Oh, yes, I like it here very much. Oh, well, Dave told me another thing. He doesn't really like the responsibility of being the foreman. Uh, he would stay on those a hand. Well, now, if you would be interested in taking over his job... Well, I don't think I could do that, no. Oh, yes, you could. You're, you're just being modest. I have been told by experts that I need a man to run this ranch. Well, maybe that could be you. We might work out some sort of a share arrangement. 
Now, you, you think about it, Ward. Ma'am. Yes? You really want me to stay on here, huh? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this. I'm... I'm not too much at giving people advice. Well, that's a refreshing change. I've been thinking it's a... It's a good thing to invest in your own property. And that way you can see it working for you. You mean the $8,000 I might invest with Mr. Canfield? Well, uh... Dave and the boys and I were talking in the bunkhouse, and we figured that... Well, the running D can handle three times the herd you have. You got a thousand acres of timber up north that hasn't even seen an axe. Now, if you invest your money in cattle and equipment for lumbering, you... That sounds wonderful. But if I invest the money with Mr. Canfield, I can double it in hardly any time at all. Then think of all the things we can do for the ranch. That's another thing I want to talk to you about. Oh, it's so nice to have someone around who treats me in a as an adult, and instead of picking on me all the time. I'm so glad you came along, Ward. Come on. Who is it? Just somebody who carried your packages this afternoon. Hello. I'm sorry I'm late. Well, that's all right. I, I was reading. I hadn't even noticed the time. Yeah, there's some coffee in the back of the stove. You want some? Mm -hmm. It will, uh, I think, help keep me alert and uh, minding my manners. I found a nice spot for the picnic, Sunday. Mountain glade, waterfall. I think only the Indians know where it is. That sounds like fun. Think Peggy would like to come along? I hope so. Oh, you were right about that wolf cub, Adam. It is becoming a problem. It would be nice to keep her mind off it. Now, let's see now. How does my tab stand with this cribbage tournament? I believe you owe me $745,000. Yeah, you know, and I have a feeling that I'm going to even it up tonight in one fell swoop. I'm sorry, Adam. You probably could, but I'm afraid I couldn't keep my mind on the game. You know that luncheon I had today? Well, I met a man named James Canfield. Uh, he's offered me a very attractive investment opportunity. Oh, what kind? The San Francisco Monterey Railroad. Canfield? Local man? Oh, no, he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. He just happened to be in town from San Francisco. How much are you intending to invest? $8,000. <laughs> oh, he's promised to double it in a few months. It's hard to resist, isn't it? What do you know about Mr. Canfield? I told you he's a friend of Ward Bannister's. Look, Laura, Bannister is a stranger that rode into this town just a couple of months ago. He is a very hardworking man and a nice one. Maybe he is. But that isn't enough reason to put a lot of money into an investment on the word of a friend of his that just happened to be passing through town. I've discussed this thoroughly with Mr. Weems. He's very impressed. Well, Mr. Weems is a very capable small-town banker. But I doubt very seriously if he knows too much about high finance, or Bannister's uh, Mr. Canfield, for that matter. Mr. Weems has sent a telegram to the president of the railroad asking him if Mr. Canfield represented him. He won't let me make a move until he gets a confirming wire. Mm. And Mr. Canfield has to leave town soon, hmm? Yes. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Why? Let's play some cribbage, huh? Can I help? I 
doubt it. I kind of got myself in a messy situation with Laura. She's investing in this railroad. Big one. I don't know, the mood she's in, I don't seem to be able to get very far in discussing it with her. Well, you think it's a bad investment? Depends on who the other investors are, how much stock has been sold, if they have any freight orders. She hasn't even bothered to check into these things. Can't you? Well, I intend to. I uh, thought I'd wire our broker in Frisco tomorrow morning and uh, let him check these things out. But the <laughs> trouble is, if we think it's a poor investment and I persuade her to pull out of it and it turns out to be a good investment, well, I'm going to be as welcome at the running D as an outbreak of cholera. Is it important to you to be welcome at the running D? Well, it is uh, now more than it was a few weeks ago, yeah. You getting the answer to that telegram we sent off this morning? No answer yet, Adam. I'll be over at the hotel having lunch. When it comes in, get it over to me right away, will you? Uh, sure will. You know, it's a funny thing. Mr. Weems, the banker, got a telegram from San Francisco today about that fellow Canfield. Said he was in power to act for the railway. For a stranger, he sure is popular. Yeah, he sure is. Yeah, he won't be here for long, though. Mr. Weems tells me he's taking the stage back to San Francisco today. Thanks, Al. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. You're not supposed to be seen with me again until after I've gotten the money. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mrs. Dayton came into town this morning. Did she give you a check to invest? Oh, she certainly did. We plucked our little pigeon for $8,000. Yeah, well, you do me a favor and forget all about it. I don't want to take her for any money. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> if every pigeon were as easy as this one has been, I'd be a millionaire today. <laughs> I'll be at that bank in Carson City when the doors open tomorrow morning and you can have your $4,000. Don't cash that check, Jim. <laughs> You're gone on the girl. Don't cash the check. Aren't you forgetting that this is my little deal, Ward? When I picked you up, you couldn't buy your way into a penny ante game. Jim, will you give me the check? I'll hold on to it for a while, and then I'll say you sent it to me because you found out the railroad is in trouble or something. Anything. But you'll get your share, I promise you. How? You've never seen a thousand dollars in one lump in your life, let alone this much. Now, run along, will you? I want to get some rest. Here it is, Adam. Just a minute to come in. Thanks. New San Francisco Monterey Railroad, and list on the exchange. Investigation showed can't be ladies come to his car. Confidence man. <laughs> Present whereabouts unknown regards to fact. Any answer, Adam? What well, time the next stage for San Francisco leaves? Well, not for about half an hour. Those can't feel already checked out. Well, there's only one way to find out.
I'm sure you'll feel better now that you've let Prince go, don't you? I guess so, Mother. Can I see Traveler for a while? Oh, just for a little while. Then when you come in, I'll read you a story. When Dave told me that you'd been gone most of the day, I, I thought maybe you'd changed your mind about staying on here. I did change my mind, but not about that. What do you mean? Well, this is a check I gave Mr. Canfield this morning. I saw Canfield after you agreed to make the deal with him. And, well, we had a long talk, and uh, he finally admitted that there was too much risk in that sort of investment. More risk than I want you to take. There's something more I want to talk to you about, Laura. What is it, Ward? I found something here I've been looking for for years. Something I never thought would be possible for me again. Well, I think that's wonderful. I'm very happy for you. Oh, marry me, Laura. Please marry me. Marry you? In no time at all, we'd have the running D in real fine shape. Oh, Ward. I, could... I don't understand you. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. Don't you remember what you said last night? I wasn't talking about getting married. What was it? You said that this this ranch needed a man and that, that I could be him. What did you mean by that? That I admired you, that, that you might run the ranch for me. Run the ranch? That's all. That's all that I miss. That's all! The times we spent together, all those weeks, the talks we had about the ranch, what we were going to do with it, was all just meant for nothing? No, no, we were going to do it on shares for you. Shares! Shares! No, oh. no, it was more than that, Lori. It me. was what? much more than that! <laughs> I had to get carried away like a like a punk kid in his first poker game. <laughs> Warden can't feel the partners in a scheme to rob you of the money with that phony railroad stock. I even risked my neck to get you that money back. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what comes of dreaming. Let's go, Warden. Ward, I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Hello, Adam. Hello, Ward. Where are you going? got to go away, Peggy. I'm sorry about that little wolf pup. We let him go this afternoon. That's where we've been. I guess you can never change animals from what they're meant to be. That sometimes happens with people, too, Peggy. Be a good girl now, huh? Peggy. 
I hope so. time. Yeah, six years, plus a payday or two here and there. Oh, I'm a uh, I'm civilian now, Candy. Mr. Russell. Yes, sir, the Army figured that 30 years was long enough, so they retired me. What are you doing now? Yeah, scratching along with the chickens, you know, doing the best I can. Because the Congress voted the officers a pension. The enlisted men, we, we didn't even get a thank you kindly. Yeah, I know. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, yeah, maybe you could. I, uh, I could use a little spot to camp on for a while. If... Well, that's easy. Ponderosa's a big spread. You pick out a spot. I'm sure I can clear it with Mr. Cartwright. A well, man couldn't ask for more than that. Fact is, I uh, already picked out a likely spot. It's, uh, it's over here. Peace, you want to ride along? I'll show you where it is. Sure. Lead the way. <laughs> You're back. Sir. Yep. Hi, Sergeant. Sergeant, I'm beginning to think that uh, running into you wasn't an accident. You don't think I'd sandbag an old friend out of here, Candy? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. But it's in a good cause. Me and the boys here, a bunch of overage rejects, and we've been traveling together. All right, you squatters. Who gave you permission to camp here? We're just about as welcome as the plague. Every place we stop, somebody comes along, wants to move us on out. Well, this time, we're staying. Carson City people don't want ex-soldiers around here. Your kind make nothing but trouble. We've had all we're going to take. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Now, hold on, Candy. Man's only saying what he feels. We don't intend to make any trouble, Mr. Uh, we don't intend to move on either. We didn't come out here to argue. I'm telling you, get out, or we'll come back here with a posse and run you out. Mr. Gibson, but me and my boys here spent about 30 years looking trouble right in the eye. Never run before, and we're not going to run now. You'll run if we have to bring out every man from Carson City. This is Ponderosa land, Mr. Gibson. It's up to Mr. Cartwright whether these men go or stay. That's no problem. Ben Cartwright will see it our way. You better go see Mr. Cartwright. Candy, I was hoping you'd say that. Come on. Yeah. You take over here, Tommy. Yeah. All right, Tom. Go. Ah, uh, Mr. Gibson's got a lot of reason for not liking old soldiers. Some of us have caused a lot of trouble. Right. Gunplay, holdups, stealing livestock, chickens, everything that isn't nailed down. That's right. Mm -hmm. I won't deny it. I won't even try. Criminals. No other name for them. If you let them squat on your land, you'll never be rid of them. Now, George, it is my land, so why don't you let me take care of that? There's no sense to you hanging around. We're sick of being asked for your handouts. We're not asking for charity. 
We aim to pay our own way. How? We brought our own jobs with us. Anybody ever hear a ginseng root? Ginseng? Yeah, for my sailing days. It's an oriental herb. They use it for medicinal purposes. That's right. More to the point, the Chinese here in this country will buy all they can get of it, and they'll pay a good price for it, too. Let me tell you something, Ben. If these has-been soldiers make one wrong move, we'll find a way to get rid of them, whether you like it or not. Come on, Al. It looks like I'm putting you in bed with your neighbors. I shouldn't want to do that. Now, don't worry about it. Mr. Gibson, he'll come around. I hope so. Well, guess I better be getting back. You know, the boys will be anxious to know how I made out. Sergeant, how you fix for rations? I've been in that camp. They're fresh out of everything. Well, you come by tomorrow morning early and pick up anything you need, Sergeant. That's, uh, that's not charity. That's alone. All right, sir. If you put it that way, I'll accept. And with thanks. Candy. Sergeant. See you in the morning. Joe. Take care. Oh, Sergeant. <laughs> How are you? Am I glad to see you? Oh, same here. Sure happy you could make it. Thank you. How'd you make out, Sergeant? Oh, got good news. Cartwright says we can stay. We're going over there tomorrow morning, pick up a whole wagon load of rations. Oh, good. Jeff Gentry's here. Inside. Ah. Uh, used to be my good right arm. <laughs> Don't burn your Confederate money. I won't. Good. I'm glad you got here. You got enough stuff there to blow up the state of Nevada. Better too much than too little. Besides, you couldn't say what the target was. You don't really care, do you? As long as it's something you can blow to smithereens? Well, you can't uh, fault a man for enjoying his work. No. Well, maybe that's what makes you one of the best. Yeah, you better uh, stow your play pretties in there in case we have any visitors. I want them out of sight. Naturally, Sergeant. You still haven't told us why you got us together. There's one man still to come. I'm expecting him any time now. As soon as he gets here, you'll all know what I have in mind. I guarantee it's something you'll enjoy. That'll be nice. I haven't had much pleasure lately. I'll just keep that key until you need it. Jeff, you want eight? You better get it now. Days are long gone, Jackson. And no more Confederate colonels. This one here. He signed up in the U.S. Army as an enlisted man, and he was retired as an enlisted man. Any of you damn Yankees don't like the way I talk or act. Come on. I'm trying to change my style. Wonder I got here at all. Yeah. You got it? Take a look. Mm. <laughs> Come on, Webby. Cherokee. Uh, man, I want you to listen to me a minute. You can go on eating if you want. But you all been, uh, Wondering just why we're here, so I figure it's time that I told you. We're a company of experts. Every man here has been selected for his own special skill. Together, we're going to wind up with more money than the entire U.S. Army ever saw before. Oh, come on, Sergeant. How are we going to do that? Good. 
took me a year to plan this. I'll tell you my own way, in my own good time. Well, we're listen, Sergeant. Yeah. We're soldiers, ain't we? Right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Should say ex-soldiers. Thrown out of the army to root with the hogs or starved. Soldiers. We've forgotten men. But we're going to do something to make them remember us, make them sit up and take notice. We're going to do something to make the whole world remember us. One thing we, we all want, something that we all earn fair and square, we're entitled to, our pension, right? Right. 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 Long we're overdue. Entitled to it. Yeah. So I think it's high time that we just helped ourselves. And that's why we're here, where the money is. Carson City Mint. Hey, we're gonna break that mint wide open and take every last red cent. Oh, 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 that's quite started. Well, Sergeant, we never get well, away with it. Sergeant, that, that's been tried before, and nobody ever even came close. <laughs> no, nobody ever had insurance. Come on over here, I want to show you something. Where it is, the key to the Carson City Met. Now, what do you say, huh? Where are we? All right, we got everything we need. We're going to operate strictly as a military unit. That's the first thing I want you to get into your heads. Military discipline all the way, one man in command. That's me. That's the way, sir. Hey, you you with me. Right. You haul a frog and we jump. You said it with me all the way, Sergeant. Hey, hey. Salt and bacon. I'd surely appreciate a little cornmeal if you've got it to spare. I would too. I've been hungering for whole cake and fried cornmeal mush for a year of Sundays. Yeah, we got plenty in the store, as you can help yourselves. All right, thank you. Cornmeal's right here, Jim. Thank you. You got it? Nice again. You bet. key to that locker, so I can't have any objection to you opening it up. I thought I just better find out why. Sergeant, getting us into the mint is your job. Getting into the vault is mine. And if you had told me what you wanted, I would have come better prepared. Better prepared? I've seen you blow up a railroad bridge with less dynamite than you got there. That's true. And that bridge was made of pilings and planks, whereas the vault is of case-hardened steel. So you drill a hole, plant a charge, blow it open. Yes, I could do that in six or eight hours. Twenty-five minutes. Change the guards every two hours. The officer of the guard makes his round every 30 minutes. Which means we'll need nitro. Nitro. And how do you figure on getting that? I'll make it. Out of dynamite. And with a little luck, I won't blow up the camp while I'm doing it. But it's a slow job, Sergeant. Slow and careful. And that's why I thought I had better get started now. Three days. Does that give you enough time? It should. Good. What do you got there?
Dressman hit us. What'd you get there? Gently, Sergeant. You keep shaking it and we'll both be missing an arm. So Ponderosa is the only place you could have got them. Why not? Oh, you fool, you. You risk the whole operation stealing something you don't even need. It's a big job, Sergeant. They might just come in handy. You'd steal anything just as long as it blows up, wouldn't you? Suppose the Cartwrights discover they're missing. They come down here, ask us what we intend to dynamite. Well, Sergeant, I have every confidence that you will think of something to tell them. Well, Perkins, thought you ought to know. Some of the men are griping. About what? Those who haven't been in Carson City think they ought to get a look at it before we hit the mint. The entire company will see Carson City tomorrow. That's part of the plan. That's all, Burton. Surprised to see you, gentlemen, in this neck of the woods. Thought you'd be going to church in Virginia City. It's closer to home. Yeah, we usually do. They got a visiting preacher over here, an old friend of Paul's. Ah, yes. Well, it'll be beneficial to all of us to hear the good word. Give us something to think about while we're out digging the ginseng root. The uh, services should be starting. Yes. Getty? Hey, um, I don't remember you as being much of a churchgoer. Candy, the older you get, the more you start thinking about the hereafter, the great day of judgment. You know, I, I got to be prepared for just about anything in my time of life. Yeah, well, I got a notion that it's not salvation you got in mind. Now, to tell you the truth, you're right. I've just been trying to make a favorable impression on the good citizens of Carson City. Well, don't you think you'd be better off if you stayed out of sight? No. No, I want to convince them that we're just as honest and decent, clean living, no different than they are. I mean it. Sure, maybe that way they'd let us stay put someplace for a while instead of running us out of the country all the time. That's a good idea. As long as that's all you've got in mind. What else would I have in mind? I don't know. An old sinner like you going to church seems a little strange. Ah, uh, <laughs> no. You better be careful. It's liable to get to be a habit. <laughs> Let's go find out. Right. You.
I never saw Jackson and Perkins run from anything in my life. What happened? I suppose I don't care for people looking over my shoulder. They play games, eh? Those men have been soldiering for 30 years. They ought to know by now it takes more than fire to detonate dynamite. But besides, as I think I mentioned, I don't like anyone looking over my shoulder, Sergeant. Your privilege. Next time you let me know, I'll take care of them. Oh, fine, fine. While I'm out hunting you up, one of the men takes this bottle and shakes it. And you're short, two men. You telling me the truth, Jim? Is that stuff was... Was it that touchy? Touchy, Sergeant? Yeah. Nitro is the meanest stuff in the world to handle. Even when it's pure, as clear as water. Can't let it get too hot or too cold. You can't bump the container. You certainly better not drop it. Unless you want to depart suddenly. And this stuff is a long, long way from being pure. Matter of fact, it reminds me of a batch I made once. Blew up. Just sitting in the shade, nobody around. At least, uh, I don't think there was anybody around. How are you going to get it from here to Carson City? I'll fill the bottle clear to the top so it doesn't slosh. I'll put it in a box packed tightly with torn up blanket strips. And when we get there, if we get there, I'll show you a trick you've never seen. How long is it going to take you to open up the vault? Four minutes, give or take 30 seconds. Of course, that's after we get to it there'll be four sentries one at each side of the building and how do you propose to take them out maybe i'll show you a little trick you never saw before of detonators missing from the Ponderosa storeroom. They were there when you and your men came for supplies, and they're gone now. You think we stole them, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I locked the storeroom after you left. Nobody's been in there till I went in this morning. Would you mind telling me what a box of dynamite caps has got to do with digging ginseng? Not a thing, Gally. But I, I will tell you something else. You're coming over here to look for them dynamite caps. Well, save me the trouble of coming after you. Coming after me? Why? Got a little job I need your help on in Carson City. Carson City. <laughs> I was right. Church going wasn't what brought you there after all, was it? No, it wasn't. Me and my men are gonna bust into the Carson City Mint. <laughs> you're, oh, come on, you're joking. No, no, no joke. You're gonna open the front door for us. Oh, come on. Yes, I looked into it, I find out. Lots of times you deliver gold and silver there for Mr. Cartwright. So what you gotta do is go up and knock on the front door and they'll open it for you. You're insane. <laughs> oh, no, Candy, no, I will admit the idea well, it, it could take a little getting used to, and uh, oh, I, I kind of hate, hate to put you in the middle, but don't you see with your help, it's going to make the job a whole lot easier. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. <sighs> You're not putting me in the middle. Because you just showed me that I don't owe you a thing. Not loyalty, not respect, not even friendship. What's happened to you? You used to be a good top kick, one of the best. Maybe you didn't always go by the book. 
But when you bent the regulations, it was to protect your men. Now you're using those stripes to turn them into a bunch of outlaws. You all through? Yeah. That's your say. Now, you listen to me for a minute, young fella. I'm gonna tell you something that even my own men don't know. And I'm not turning outlaw in my old age, either. Me and every one of them men out there served the country for over 30 years. And then they were turned out to pasture, to starve. That's why I'm gonna take that gold from the Carson City Mint and I'm gonna hold it for ransom. People all over the country will hear about it. Now realize how desperate our situation is. And the newspapers will get hold of it. No. Yes, and they'll make Congress pass a law to give us our pensions. And then, then, Candy, I'm going to turn the gold back to them. No, that's not the way to do it. Even if you're lucky enough to pull it off, you'll just turn everybody against you. It'll work, Candy. Believe me, I tell you. No, work. Well, you can count me out. <laughs> I'm going to have to show you a few things. Well, first off, that wagon over there with the insignia painted on the side is a decoy. It's going to get us to the front of the mint. It's going to get you shot. You don't even look like soldiers. No, we will. We will. A supply sergeant friend of mine has come up with four brand new regulation uniforms. Candy, everything's been planned right down to the last detail. Rifle. Ammunition, uniforms, nitro, and this. This is going to open the door of the mint for us. Of course, a lot of the good people inside could get killed. Save a lot of bloodshed if you'd open the door for us, Candy. So you're declaring war on the United States government? It can be that way, or we can get what we want without one shot being fired. It's all up to you. Oh, no, no. You're going to have to do it without me, Sergeant. Time up. I think you'll change your mind, kid. I'm sure hoping you will. Money. You all got your orders. You know what to do. Just make sure that not more than two of you ride into town at the same time. Good luck. Be there, I'm out. I'm out. Take a fire left. Forward. Oh. It's nitro, Mr. Kennedy. Think about that on our rough ride into town. Yeah, I'm sure. The road tracks, wagons, horses, and everything. They asked permission to stay, and then they just up and leaves. Does that seem a little strange to you? Yeah, to put it mildly. 
I'd like to know what happened to Candy and those dynamite caps. And these tracks head for Carson City. Bet you this time they're not going to church. Seven minutes left. Make it 23 to be on the safe side. I told you I only need four. Ninety seconds. Bullseye candy. This cannon's aimed to make a bullseye right on the front door, said I'd meant. Yep, it's all loaded and waiting. All I gotta do is just let the spark to that fuse. Candy, we're gonna bust into that mint one way or the other. Now, you're gonna help us, you nod your head, yes. Because if you shake it now, you're gonna start a small war.
Kennedy. Delivering gold for uh, Ben Cartwright. Just a minute. and the rest of us stab into the room there, Tang Gag. Hartman, move on. Move on. Get him in there. Get in there. Move in. Get in there. Quick. Get in there. Get in there. Hey, take candy over there, Tang Gag him. Keep your eye on him every minute. He's trickier than a bucket full of snakes. I know. I train him. Jeb, the ball's back here through these doors. Come on, get started. Well, then send somebody ahead of me, Sergeant. With what I'm carrying, I'd rather not get into a shooting match. Perkins. All clear. Come ahead. Let's go. Five minutes before. Can I help? Yes. Stay out of the way. Why would anybody want to leave a wagon parked right in the middle of the street like that? Don't talk, just keep riding. supplies out at the Ponderosa. Hey, that fellow back there at the wagon, did you ever see him before? No. Could he be one of Russell's men, you think? Yeah, it could be. Joe, we better get some help. Cartwright just rode past. Bo's afraid they might have recognized the sentry. Now, that's your problem, isn't it, Sergeant? And you'd better get set to handle it, because this thing is going in exactly a minute and a half. boys rode past a few minutes ago. Maybe they recognized Jackson and maybe they didn't. Yeah, Tom, folks. They come and go. Pass by this place so often they never really see it. Well, we hope they don't. If they can't right, should come back. Just uh, open the door and ask them in. I'll just do that. Come 
Four minutes, ten seconds, Jeb. How much longer? Just as long as it takes me to light the match. Run, both of you. Russell and Cartwright says rode up, heading home. All right, Russell's man thinks we left town. He's still out in front of the mint. You get going, we'll take care of the wagon. Russell, there's something you haven't told us yet. Where are we taking this gold, and where do we split it up? We're not splitting it up. We're heading up into the Rimrock country as the unit. Find some place up there that we can defend. A place we can defend? There is no such place. Sarge, Bo says the street's clear. We've got to get moving. Right. You're not making any sense, Russell. Now, we all have a share in that gold. And if we split it up and run, every man for himself, some of us will make it. I am in command here. We're holding that gold for ransom until Congress votes us a pension. You mean give back the gold after all this? If we keep it, we're thieves. We do it my way, we're just fighting for our rights. We do it your way, we rot in jail or hang. I am still in company. Ah. He drew first. Yeah, he drew first. Let's go. All right, the street is clear. Open the door. Sergeant Russell. He's shot. That's right. He wanted to give the gold back, and when I said no, he drew on me. You shot Sergeant Russell. Oh! Now you open that door. It's a long way to Mexico. Open it! I'll settle with you when we get to Mexico.
yellow bellies. Pick up those guns and hold them off till I get the nitro. No, you don't. It's all over. You said, but I guess I deserved it. <laughs> Dirt and jeer. Oh, excuse, please. You understand Chinese? <laughs> Oaf is a for dumb chicken, not for pretty lady. Hop Sing, I'm Jennifer. Jennifer Collier. Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> oh, good to see you. Is Mr. Cartwright at home? Mr. Cartwright, everybody gone. They be back for supper. Oh, it's just as well. I'd like to freshen up a bit anyway. Freshen up? Sai mean sin. Oh, sai mean sin. Dai hung leila, hung goine. Ho, ho, ho. My trunk is still at the depot. We'll have to send for it. Oh, nice to have pretty visitor oh. here again. Oh, it's nice to be here. Follow me, please. Oh. Jennifer. <laughs> Welcome, Missy Jennifer. Come in. Just the way I've always remembered it. Nothing changed. Missy Jennifer, how is your father, Mr. Harry? Oh, he's fine, thank you. Mr. Cartwright looked forward to see him, but he not tell Hop Singh to expect such pretty bonus. I fix you number one guest Hop room. Hop Singh? Yes, Missy. These were Ben's wives, weren't they? Yes. This a mama of Adam, madam of horse, and mama of little Joe. Very pretty, no? Oh, yes. I fix you room chop chop so you can sign me in seat. <laughs> Stock to work. You better put that supper on the back of the stove. Maybe you like Hopsy put her on back of the stove. Who? What? Pretty her. Missy Collier. Missy Collier? Yeah. Hello, Ben. My goodness. 
My goodness. <laughs> oh, how wonderful to see you. Jennifer. Oh, why didn't you let us know you were coming? I didn't want to cause any trouble. Don't worry, Hop Singh took care of me quite well. Oh, I'm sure he did. He must have been happy to see you. <laughs> well, here you are, all grown up, an engineer. Harry told me you were back east at an engineering seminar. That was six months ago. And I'm so anxious to see Harry's new mining pump. Do you realize, Jennifer, if it works, how much property can be saved, how many lives? It'll work. I came out ahead to get things ready. Pop will be here day after tomorrow. Good, good. Oh, you've got to come outside with me. Hoss and little Joe are just putting up the horses. I want to see the look on their faces when they see little Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> Then you'd never know the problems I had getting here. Would you sit up, please, Mr. Gallagher? I can't understand why Jennifer didn't tell you what happened. Well, all she said was that she was getting here a few days early so she could help you. Help me? She left an angry groom and over 300 guests waiting at the church. You saying that Jennifer was going to get married? Sunday last, to Tuttle Ames. Uh, Tuttle Ames? You mean that, that banker, that young tycoon I've been hearing about? You should have seen him. His face was as red as a lobster. Oh, when that Jenny makes her mind up, she's sure her mother's daughter. <laughs> ben, Mr. Collier, Dr. Crump wrote me to give you a thorough examination. Now, I can't do it if you're going to keep chattering like a magpie. <clears throat> Sorry, Doctor. Dr. Crump says I'm all right. Heart's as strong as an ox. Ah, as long as that ox gets plenty of rest and restricts his exercise in his high altitude. Now, do you have plenty of those powders that your doctor prescribed? Yeah. All right, you can get dressed. Don't worry, Doctor. I'll make very sure that he takes you in care of himself. Thanks, Ben. And watch his diet, will you? No fat foods. Harry, your shirt. Everything here on the list. Take a look over there. Tuttle Ames. How'd it go? Devil knows. She doesn't seem much inclined to go back to San Francisco. What about Tuttle Ames? Didn't say much. But she's only interested in getting the presents back to those that sent them. Well, she must have said something. Well, the fact is, she did most of the talking. But I've never been able to make much sense out of that girl. On the other hand, she might listen to you. Now, wait a minute, Harry. Jennifer is your daughter. Ben, you've got to do this for me. You're the only one she'll listen to. And I can't get on with the water project till I have this settled. Ben? All right, Harry, I'll give it a try. Sure wish you had three sons instead of one daughter. Come in. Oh, I see Papa sent you to talk some sense to me. Yes, yes, something like that. Poor Papa, he'll just never understand what I did. Well, premarital did a common malady for the groom as well as the bride. Is... is that how you see me? A nervous young girl? Well, no, no. I... When I told Tuttle I wasn't going to marry him, it was no momentary impulse, Ben. Oh, Jennifer, why did you go through with it right up to the altar? He kept after me and after me. Tuttle is not a man to take no for an answer. Well, it sounds like he'd make a perfect husband. Not for me. When we got to the church, I just couldn't go through with it. I suppose you're going to tell me that you know exactly the kind of man you want to marry. Yes. Have you found him? Oh, yes. 
Does he know? He should. Uh, Paul, there's a fellow downstairs, see. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Ben Cartwright. Yes. Sam Morris is the name. What's this? On behalf of my client, Tuttle Ames, I hereby inform you you're to appear at the Virginia City Civil Court two weeks hence. What's that he said? Two weeks hence, where you'll defend yourself against the charge herein. What charge? It's on the paper. Take a look and see. Good day, sir. I'm sorry, Ben. The alienation of the affection of one Jennifer Leslie Collier. You knew about this? But I should have. Why? Because you were the one I told him I was going to marry. Jennifer's trousseau, wedding gifts, dust for the bridesmaid. I guess that does it. You know, this would be a lot simpler if you just got Jennifer to go up to San Francisco. I told you the test is here. If Mohammed won't come to the mountain, then... He... Yes? Oh, Mr. Coy. Hello, Bert. Brother Collier. This is Ben Cartwright. Bert Taylor there is my best man. You see, I intend to marry Jennifer before I leave this town. Well, surely that would be Jennifer's decision. But if you are that confident, what's the point of the suit? I don't wish to discuss it. It seemed to me that you'd want to keep the woman you intend marrying out of a messy situation. That's my concern. I'm not interested in your opinion. You're a blasted boy. Ben's trying to be reasonable. Father Collier, my fight isn't with you. Mr. Cartwright, I'll see you in court. Tuttle, Ben here is an old friend of mine. It's all right, Harry. <laughs> Jim Wilson's my turn. He'll act for me. I guess you'll be wearing your wedding suit real soon. I think you're right, Bert. Come in. Oh. oh, Jenny. Before you come downstairs, there's something I want you to know. What's the matter? Ted Lames is in Virginia City. He means to cause Ben trouble, and he's not bluffing. Ted Lames never saw the day he could frighten Ben Cartwright. Oh, frightened Ben, he can't. But he won't stop trying until he's hurt Ben. He's got power and he's got money. And he might just do it. Papa, do you want me to marry Tuttle? I want what will make you happy. But you know how I feel about Ben. I want you to be fair with him. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. 
Except you have the most roundabout way of giving a daughter your blessing. Hey, that sure is a pretty dress you got, huh? Thank you. Oh, Missy Jennifer. Half sink, have a special treat. Big stock, just like you say. Plenty butter, plenty honey, A number one good. Oh, thank you, Hop Thing. Where's Mr. Cartwright? Oh, he outside in storage room. Something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. You know, I'm saying if you play your cards right, uh, Miss Jennifer might put in a good word for you. Go on, tell me, go on, 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 You've, uh, you've talked to your father? Yes. You heard about Tuttle, then? Yes. Should that make any difference? Well, it will if you, if you tell him the truth. And that is? Well, that you weren't running after me, you were running away from him. Oh. And that's the truth? Jennifer, I, I don't pretend to know what, what's going on in your mind, but uh, well, I can understand you saying certain things that you don't necessarily believe just to get out of a situation. Then uh, maybe you'll understand the memory of a tall stranger who brought a young girl her first flowers, who showed her San Francisco, a city she lived in, but really never known. Jennifer, you were... Uh, you were 12 years old at the time you were a child. Yes. But I knew I would marry a man like you one day. Tuttle. It was a mistake. It made me know that I don't want a man like you. Hitched up the team, I ought to be the one. So you to hitched up it. the team. I got the wagon ready. It I takes a lot longer to hitch up a team than I had to, to get a wagon. The whole thing oh, hey, it took me two hours. I remember the most important thing. I had Hop Singh fix up a little lunch for us. Well, it's because that's all you think about is eating, huh? That's right. right. Of course, why not? Let's look at right now, right? All right. Howdy, oh, Sam. Hey, Good morning. How are you? There we go. I hitched up the team. I fixed got the wagon lunch. ready. Well, it was nice. Uh, well, I, I hitched up the team. Got it, got it ready. I think I, that's very considerate of you. All of you. Thank you very much. See you later. Yeah. Bye. This has to be the most wonderful country in the world. Well, it is. At least I think it is. 
Because you don't remember. You were here once, oh, years ago. Yeah? Matter of fact, I think it was right under that tree. I came looking for you because you'd, uh, you'd gone out by yourself, and I found you right under that tree chasing a whole bunch of squirrels. I remember. <laughs> and I looked up, and there you were, sitting straight in the saddle, tall and handsome. <laughs> no, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> and smiling, always smiling. As if you were really pleased to see me. Well, I was. Oh, I feel so lightheaded today. <laughs> well, it could be the altitude. Could be the company. <laughs> it seems I remember the feeling one other time. Trip to Oceanside Park. Well, yeah, of course, that was the time I tried to teach you how to sail and we dumped in the water. <laughs> oh, it was fun. <laughs> I suppose it's past my bedtime. Good night, Papa. <laughs> Besides, tomorrow's a big day. And Jenny's giving me that look. Her mother used to stable a team of mules with it, kind of an evil eye. You better look out for it, Ben. Very funny. <laughs> and it's getting late. It's time you were in bed. <laughs> See what I mean? And she's right. <laughs> I better get my rest. Tomorrow's a big day. And don't forget, Good Ben. Good night, Papa. Good night, Ben. Good night, Harry. Night, Cap. That would be very nice. Thank you. Now, you and I must have a little talk. You make it sound so serious. Sit down, young lady. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jennifer, you're young, you're vital, you're beautiful. And, uh, yes, I'm, I'm flattered that you might want to marry me. That's the secret of my success, flattery. Jennifer, have you thought this through? A dozen times. Why? Why? Well, if only because of the, the years between us. Are you young enough to marry one of my sons? Yes, I am. But I don't want to marry one of your sons. I want to marry you. Me? Or that other man? The one who taught you to ride? Try to teach you how to sail in the bay at San Francisco and dumped you in the water when you were a child. The man you are now. You don't know the man I am now. Oh, Ben. I do. No. Ben. I'm not that young. It's true, I had a dream, a memory, if you prefer, but I've tested that memory. I've seen you, I've been with you, I've talked to you. I like... I love what I've seen. And I like what I see. And I, I believe that you, you feel what you're saying now. But in five years... If I wasn't sure, I wouldn't be here. If I wasn't sure that in five years I'd feel the same way, that I could be a wife to you, a, a help to you, a friend to your sons. Let's talk about that. My sons. Ben, be honest with me. Have you changed your mind? Jennifer, I haven't made up my mind. There are so many problems to discuss. Jennifer, this is a masculine household. I know that Possum little Joe won't show any resentment, but there may be 
resentment, and you may feel it. I'm not worried. Well, there are other problems. You, you'll be away from your father, from your friends. Ben, there are problems in every marriage. Problems that people can and do solve. But this is not every marriage. You're trying to talk me out of it. Now, Jennifer... It's time we both got some rest. Tomorrow's an important day. Well, every day is an important day, Jennifer. Oh, yes, Ben. Yes. Sit down for a couple of minutes, will you? I've got to talk to you about something. Important? Well. Shoot. I've been, uh, been up most of the night. Got it. Well, I've been thinking about it. Well, I've been, uh, I've, I've had to try to come to some kind of a decision. It's been a, well, it's a very difficult decision have to make, and I, I think perhaps I've, I've reached it, but, uh, I just thought I had to talk to both of you about it. Yeah, well, well, what is it? Since it affects both of you. We've lived here together at the Ponderosa for some time. I hope it won't change anything. Well, the fact of the matter is, I, I've asked Jennifer to The fact of the matter is, I've, uh, I've decided to ask Jennifer to marry me. Good. Oh, what was it that you wanted to talk about that was important? <laughs> it's not exactly a surprise, Pa. <laughs> <laughs> How about some breakfast? Right, We're well, going to <laughs> Oh, no thanks, Hoss. Got to check a few gauges. How's it going? Good. Real good. <laughs> this morning, everything's good. Hey, wait, hey. wait, wait. Let me give you a hand. Oh. Ah, thank you, gentlemen. Today, I <laughs> feel wonderful. Just wonderful. And to tell you the truth, I think it's more because of you and Jenny rather than the mine. You know, it was a very difficult thing, raising a girl child all alone. For a while there, I had my worries. <laughs> but I got a feeling today her mother would be very, very proud. And with the pump ready to be tested, how could I be a happier man? Tuttle, come here and look. Looks like you were right. Just a matter of time. Good. Be just like the taking of a general sword. Go out in the hall and greet her. Right. The volume's dropped almost 50%. Doing real good there for a while, wasn't it? Well, the lower the water drops in the shaft, the longer it has to lift. The harder the pump has to work. 
It simply doesn't have the capacity. We're not even able to keep up with the seepage. Important thing is it works. But not efficiently, Penn. Not efficiently. No, no. The, the mud's already clogging the valves. It'll take over a month to redesign, at least a month or two to build and test a new one. Well, Harry, you've licked a couple of problems. I'm sure you'll find a way of licking this one, too. This way, Miss Coyne. Tuttle, I... Yes, Jennifer? Now that I'm here, I... find it difficult to say what I want. You might try apologizing. That's a logical beginning. I suppose I do owe you an apology. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Tuttle. Good. That's done. I must admit there was a time you had me worried with this Cartwright foolishness. If you'd listen to me in San Francisco, there wouldn't be any need for this. Of course, we'll be married here. I've already made inquiry. This suite will do nicely. Bert, I'm sure, can find a handsome lady to act as your maid or a matron of honor. What are you talking about? Our wedding. And this time, there'll be no running off. You made a fool of me once. It's not going to happen again. I am not going to marry you, Tuttle. Surely you don't expect me to give up that easily. After all, you made me a laughing stock in San Francisco. You owe me, Jennifer. I told you in plenty of time. You could have called off that wedding. Such consideration. It wouldn't have worked anyway. You know that. And Cartwright? Ben Cartwright is a wonderful man. He's kind and gentle. And he cares about people, which is something you'd never understand. You would marry me, this builder of empires. Well, let me tell you something. It's a backwoods empire. Your Mr. Cartwright is not so invulnerable as you might think. What do you mean? Sit down, my dear. Now it's your turn to listen to me. Lumber, for example. A third of Mr. Cartwright's income is derived from lumber. I can go into the lumber business, acquire stumpage, build mills, and sell lumber for far less than Mr. Cartwright. 30 or 50 percent less. You deliberately lose money to hurt him. It will be my pleasure. And I'll get the money back after he goes broke and I raise the prices. Cattle? He needs cars at the railheads to ship his cattle to market. I own railroad stock. He'll have trouble getting cars. Lots of trouble. Always the perfect gentleman. Horses. I can bring in horses from California. And corner the market. That's right. Ah, you're getting the idea. I may not sink Cartwright, but I'll hurt him badly. In two years, he'll be selling the Ponderosa piecemeal to pay his debts and stay afloat. And if you're successful, what kind of a marriage do you think it will be? A splendid one. You'll understand who's running things. That's the foundation of all good marriages. You'll see it my way, Jennifer. There are no alternatives. There must be a hundred or so of these old flooded mines around. This thing works good. Be worth a fortune to you. Now, hold on, Hoss, hold on. Each mine presents a different problem. We'll have to check this one out first before we start talking about the... Uh... Ben! Ben! Come here. Come here, Doc. I got a call. I'll be all right. Those powders work faster and better than dynamite. 
Makes a nervous ticker like mine sing like a bird. <laughs> I bet it does. Now, up. Come on. Though the doc says it'll give a good, what, a bad case of the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> sure, now let's get you back, huh? Easy. All right. All right, now just be careful. No reason for me to be flat on my back when I still have work to do. After all, I don't have a broken leg. When did you get your diploma? I got a degree in engineering. I'm and... not talking about engineering. I mean your medical diploma. Medical diploma? I don't have a medical. That's what I thought. Then I suggest you don't try to tell the doctor what's good for the patient. You see that he stays in bed for at least 24 hours. We will, doctor. Harry, we'll look after the pump and keep an eye on that water level for you. There'll be two of you down if you don't stop talking about the mine. A shrew, that's what I'm raising, a shrew. My glasses. Where are my glasses? <laughs> There's nothing worse than a know-it-all woman. Jennifer. Yes, Ben. <laughs> you know, with, with everything happening so quickly, I, uh, I'm afraid I overlooked one important formality. It's, it's lovely, but... Uh... Jennifer? What is it? Don't ask me. Not now. There's something wrong. What is it? Ben, I'm not going to marry you. I want to tell you sooner, but... With Papa ill. You've changed your mind again. You're going to marry Tuttle Ames? Yes. He offered to take me back in spite of the hurt I caused him. I'll be moving into town tomorrow morning. And that's all there is to it. Excuse me, I have to pack. could be just a little soft. <laughs> now, the bride and her father will enter from this corridor. Everything is going very smoothly, just as expected. Good. The guests are arriving. I think you'd better be downstairs to meet them. I was just going. I'll greet them in the corridor. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's so nice to see you. Second floor, first door on your right. Oh, Cartwright. Yes? I expect you know the way. Oh, yes. How are you? Nice to see you. So glad that you could come. Uh, right in here. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Ames? Mr. Collier told me that he had invited you. Of 
course, you're welcome. Thank you. I wanted you to know that I have dropped the legal action against you. That's very considerate, Mr. Ames. Of course, it would be rather pointless now anyway, wouldn't it? Yes. And Jennifer has assured me that there was never really anything between you. Then you won't mind if I speak to her? Not at all, but make it brief. The ceremony is due to begin in just a few minutes. Well, this won't take long. Uh, where's her room? All right, just down the hall. Thank you. Come in. Oh, Ben, I'm glad you came. I, uh, I didn't want to wait till after the ceremony. I was afraid I, I might miss you. Um, this is, uh, something I wanted you to have. Oh, Ben, it's lovely. It's been in the family for a long time. Well, I guess I, I'd best be getting along, but I did want you to have that. Ben. Would you put it on me? If I'm not all thumbs. Then you forgive me. Of course I forgive you. gathered here to join this couple in holy matrimony, the most binding of all contracts here upon earth. For that reason, it is to be taken as seriously by those in attendance as it is by the pair who take these vows. Therefore, I ask now, is there any man here who can give just cause this couple should not be joined together? Do you, Tuttle, take Jennifer to love and protect, to honor and cherish, to obey all? <laughs> Miss Carlin. Oh, Jennifer, what's the matter? I'm a doctor. Pulse is racing a mile a minute. We'd better take her up to her room. Easy now. Right. What's wrong with her, Doctor? She's a very sick girl just now, but she's going to be all right. I thought at first she had a heart problem. Then I found this was the cause. It's one of my powders. Mm -hmm. And naturally, it speeded up her heartbeat. Her pulse is still very fast, and she has a thunderous headache. But in a few days, she'll be back to normal. Thank you, Doctor. Trouble. You don't want to marry me? You're not going to marry Ben Cartwright either, because if you try, I will destroy him absolutely. You've got my solemn word on that. I'm sorry. Oh, Jennifer. You'll be up and around in no time. It's going to be a long time, I'm afraid. Oh, no. No. It may seem that way now, but it, it won't be. Why, we'll get you down to the proper sea level, and I'll come to see you in San Francisco. Oh, I'd like that. But I... I think a, a different climate would be best place that's warm and dry. 
All right. Yes. Do you do that? That's for sure. Tuttle couldn't even wait for the stage. Yeah. That doesn't tell us how Jenny is, though, does it? Let's go on over and find out, huh? We heard about it over at the restaurant. How's Jenny? Uh, she'll, uh... She'll be fine in time. I'm sure she will be. Well, meanwhile, we've got a, uh, We've got a ranch to run. I suggest we get back to it. Yeah. his eyes. Then we're gonna have us a little fun first. He's getting closer. Kill him! Don't be in such a hurry. Kill him! I said no, dinner. Up here! Get down there. Get his rifle and his gun belt. Right. See if you got any grub. Right. Get off your horse. Go away your gun belt. What's this all about? What do you want? Don't move. No way, I wasn't figured on it. Just stay right where you are till my man comes down here. Yeah, I was planning on doing just that, ma'am. That thing's got a hair trigger on it. What'd they call you? Hoss. Hoss Cartwright. Hoss? <laughs> That's a good name. Yeah. I think I'll hold on to you for a while. No, we ain't! Said so we're hanging on to it. We're going back up on top, where we can see who's coming. Pass around that rock. Put your hands down. You're going to need them to climb with. Bring that fine horse of his. Move, white man. You ain't butt started. behind your back.
Where's Solomon? I don't know no Solomon. You're gonna learn. I ain't gonna be standing around for no fooling around out of you. Find any grub? Yeah, canned stuff. Beans, peaches, shells. Money, too. Hmm. You're right on time. Me and Liza was thinking about eating old Claire there. I ain't got no idea what you're talking about. Pretty soon, you're gonna be finding out. I'm gonna fix us some grub. You want me to fix some for him, too? No. Ain't gonna be living long enough. Watch. You know what, Hoss? for your shoulder. What I was saying a while back is that I done caught myself a friend. Look, I don't know... I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. But who are you, anyhow? Oh, Buck Walter. <laughs> well, now, Buck, none of this makes sense to me. You know what? That there is the very same thing I told Solomon. Who is a Solomon? Oh. Making like you don't know. Second time you lied, white man. About time you met my friend. Truth. Big old bull rattler. It's cold in these hills for sun up. They're easy to catch when it's cold. Can't hardly get out of their own way. Figure to catch me a whole mess of them. Wait till Solomon and his bunch ride to the bottom of the butte. Spill them on them. Scatter them. Those that live that long. Me, up here with a rifle. I'd have me a turkey shoot. Hmm. Why? Where's Solomon? I don't know. Rattler gets hot, gets mean. Where's Solomon? How far back? I don't know. I told you. at you, Hoss. Looking to strike somebody, you the only one he see. Why are you doing this? Why? Truth getter. This here butte ain't close to no roads, no cattle trails, no nothing. 
where you headed? I was on my way home. You lying? I ain't. Where you coming from? Coming from Ledbetter. got away. I shot him. But I got something better. Got you. You. You and that, that woman of yours. What's the matter with you, anyhow? <laughs> Hard to tell which one of us is crazy, huh? got cause. Right. Robbing a total stranger, sticking a rattlesnake on him? Truth is, hoss, we celebrating. What? Celebrating, you know, like when something good happens to you. Yeah, well, I ain't never had nothing like this happen to me before. Yeah. Because you ain't black. Maybe. This Solomon is... Is he after you? Is that why you're up here? Partly. What's he after you for? Kill us. Well, it looks like you'd be running instead of hanging around up here. What my wife said. About two of us, riding and tying one old horse. She about wore her feet to the bone. Down there on the flat, they'll kill us quick and easy. But up here, We've got to come through that narrow path. And I'll kill them all. If they're the law, they'll just keep it coming. They'll get you. They may have to starve you out, but they'll get you. Joe. Lies and me know we ain't gonna be leaving this butte. But before we go, we're gonna get everything weight we can get a gun sight on. With us. <laughs> Our celebration. Well, reading these tracks is nothing. You could do it as well as me. I have. But you get paid a dollar a day extra for tracking. So you tell me and earn your dollar. Buck's woman rode her horse into that bush. She is Buck's wife, Liza. Liza Walter. Wife, woman, what's the difference? <laughs> Ask your wife. They've been walking a mile and riding a mile. Buck's walking two now and riding one. He's wearing shoes and she ain't. How far ahead are they? How should I? They might be stopped over that ridge. Would you? Begin to get yourself killed, would you, uh, stake out in the open? No, but I ain't a murdering savage like I that. I know what you are. You are a man don't even like yourself. I married your sister. That's good sense. I guess. But you still ain't earned your dollar. How long ago would you say Buck left here? Seven, eight hours. Headed for Phantom Creek if he can find it. you find it. Why he's circling north? We could have had him by dark if we'd have rode harder. I guess I'm gonna have to kill Buck. I ain't never killed a woman before. I don't want to. You're letting him get away. No, I'll get him. I've just been letting the sun boil the juices out of him and the sand blister her feet, hoping that maybe he'll leave her and go on alone. Yeah, hoping. That'll get you nothing. No. That's Buck's wife with him. He's gonna have to show her he's the man that she thinks he is. He did that when he killed young Ledbetter. Man has to keep on going and showing his wife. You got something else to worry about. Daddy Ledbetter's hired gun hand. 
riding up our trail, wondering why you haven't done your job. Yeah. Let him come. This place sure hasn't changed. Uh, there's nothing in this town to make horse a week late, that's for sure. I've seen livelier graveyards. Something must have kept him. Even the jail isn't doing any business. I'll ask at the Cattlemen's Association. You must have stopped there. I'll check with Annie Tolan down at the livery stable, and I'll try the restaurants. All right. Boss ain't any one of those. The owner will sure remember him. <laughs> it's my fault this horse stayed in Ledbetter. I told him about that sorrel. As soon as he saw it, he had to have it. Well, it shouldn't take him five days to buy a horse. It does if Dave Bent owns it. When did he leave? Well, like I was telling you. I told you to saddle my horse. I did. He's in the stall. We'll get him. Oh, wait a minute, mister. I'm talking to the man. I'll be right back, Joe. You see, he knows me. I mean, uh, I whistle and he runs. Now, that should uh, tell you something. Yeah, but you wouldn't want to hear it. Maybe. Here you are. I'm sorry, Joe. He's led better's gun hand. He lives here. You don't. Forget it. Like I was asking, when did my brother leave? Well, I was telling you. When you dicker with Bent, he tells you he's going to auction the horse as soon as the rich buyer comes in from Texas. Yeah, but when did my brother leave? When he bought the horse. The day before yesterday. Hello, Andy. Hi, Ben. Good to see you. Thank you. That horse was in town for five days. I know. The hotel clerk just told me. She'd like to know why. Bought a horse. You what? Buying a horse. We have a whole herd of horses back at the Ponderosa. Not like this sorrel. I never seen a horse I wanted so much in my whole life. It was uh, a special horse. You had a birthday coming up, remember? Oh, yeah, so I have. We should have met him on the road. That road wanders to hit all the towns. There's more than one way to Virginia City. Why don't you ask Bent? He knows which road he took. Horse left him out there. How do we get to Bent's place? First road east, mile out of town. Uh, we'll try there. Thank you, Andrew. See you later. Thank you. Right. Don't work too hard, huh? Hey. What are you doing? <sighs> Try that again and I'll break your head. I'm thirsty. I ain't wasting no water on you. You'd let a human being die for nothing? I mean, would you? Ain't for nothing. Then what's it for? I hate white people. But why? Because they mean. Oh, there's meanness in everybody. Ain't the same. It's y'all thinking that you're better. Acting like poor colored folks ain't got no feelings. May be true with some white folks, maybe even most of them, but not with all of them, and that's for danger. You see somebody being mistreated, and you don't do nothing to help them. How I'm going to know you ain't with them? That's the way white folks is. That's why I hate them. All of them. Yeah, well, what about you? You was just fixing to blow my head off. We ain't got nothing to lose. We don't care no more. And that don't make you no better than the rest of them, does it? That's been the trouble. We've been trying to be better. But now Buck and me, we counting on being just like y'all. Obvious, you tell them no fine horses when you see them. 
And you'll never see finer animals than those two. I own this establishment. Dave Bent. Davy to my friends. Bent? Uh, Davy, we heard a lot about a sorrel you had. Oh, yes, that one. Beautiful horse, but sold. Now, these two. I'm selling them at auction. As, as soon, soon as, as a wealthy buyer from Texas comes in. <clears throat> Mr. Bent, my name is Ben Cartwright. My son, Horse, is the fellow that bought that sorrel from you. Now, what we'd like to know is, uh, when did he leave here and which direction did he take? Left the day before yesterday. Went by way of Phantom Creek. Oh, yeah. Good water there. Pleasant break and a weary ride. A little hard to find. Well, we've been there. Thank you very much. They coming? No. But I found me a good seat up there. Got a feeling they ain't too far off. I think I'm gonna keep steady watch. I'm thirsty, Buck. Give him some water, honey. I said no, and I meant it. I ain't giving him nothing. I wasn't talking to you. I asked Buck. Well, I miss Buck. And I ain't said no. You watch your horse now. Them horses need some watering. Be a waste. We ain't gonna be riding them. But do what you want. Give them horses water before you would me? Horses ain't wearied me none. White folks have. And I've had all I want out of you. Well, they were here, but they didn't stay long. Bring them on down. Water the horses and fill your canteens. Now you stay here. Rest for a while. I'll be back soon. Where are you going? Up there. Country turns rough now. Lots of buttes and canyons. Man on the run takes to the high ground. He wants us to come to him. And he'll take as many of us with him as he can. You go wandering around there alone, you just might get yourself killed. Might lose your job, even. I've been doing this job for a long time. I ain't never been killed yet. you tracked him like you're supposed to why don't you ask the sheriff if he'll be back for long but you were his uh deputy mm. now what's wrong with my asking you you got any questions about plans you better ask solomon oh i will i surely will but in the meantime why don't you Order my horse. Just make sure he don't drink any of that slime, huh? Sure, horse. You water him. I said water him. Now. Settle this later, deputy. Any time, gunfighter. I don't know who started it, and I don't want to. But I'm telling you, I don't want no more of it. We'll move out in ten minutes. 
We got about three hours of daylight left. If we push, we can get to Phantom Creek before dark. Let him sneak up on you. Run plum out of time. Center. A wild shot like that. Luck run out. Looks like that's where the shooting's coming from. Why don't you take a couple of men right around the other side, see if you can find out what it was all about. You really think he can get down that side? Unless he's half monkey. That cliff's steeper than the flagpole. But you can see the top from there. Go around the other side. We'll meet you up yonder. Right. Make it fast, Cal. Why are you stalling? I mean, why don't we ride straight in and take him now? Go ahead if you're in a hurry to die. Then what are you going to do? I'm gonna make camp where I can see that butte, where he can't put a bullet in us. Come dark, we'll find the trail he used going up. Come daylight, we'll be covering that trail. I'm hoping he'll run out of water and begin to sweat. Maybe he'll even surprise me and surrender. Well, you should have taken him long before now. But this... this... This cat and mouse and, and uh, that black buck is still alive. And you know something else? Daddy Ledbetter, he ain't gonna like this at all. Well, why don't you ride back and tell him? Well, I 
tracks around a water hole. Makes it hard to read. Yeah, it's coffee, huh? Well, a lot of desert. It's the only water around. Yeah, most of those tracks are fresh. I get a feeling that posse came through this way. Thanks. You mean the lead better posse? Mm-hmm. People on the run in the desert have to go to where the water is. Is it Hawes, that posse, and the killer are somewhere up ahead? Well, you're just guessing. Horses are tired. We're tired. We can't track in the dark, so why don't we have something to eat, get some rest, and we'll start out with the first light. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, do you, uh, see anything? Don't expect to. But I got ears. Buck tries to bring horses down that trail. They're gonna make plenty of noise. Two horses went up to the butte. Buck and Liza got somebody else up there with them. You could have met somebody on the trail. Stolen his horse. And killed him. No. We'd have found the body or the grave. I'm wondering... Prisoner or friend? How much? How much what? Reward. What's Dad led better offering for Buck? Two thousand. And he don't want no trial. I'm listening. The what? The rest of it. Is that the price for one or both? Two thousand. A piece. I knew it. You come charging up our trail like a cyclone when you're chasing money. Sonny Ledbetter was a friend of mine. As a matter of fact, he was my best friend. Sure. As much a friend as you ever had. And that ain't much. Come to think of it, you two had a lot in common. You know, I am going to remember what you said, Chair. And one of these days, I'm going to make you regret having said it. You do that. Nothing like hate to keep a man awake. You watch. I'm turning in. Let him go. No. We're gonna need him. For what? Insurance. They think twice when they know we got a white man up here. Buck. Hmm? There's something I didn't tell you. Earlier, when he got away and you went after him, I was hoping you'd let him go. You what? You're gonna wake him up. It's crazy. And it doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Teach him they can't go messing around with colored folks all the time. You so mean. How come you didn't kill him? <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you. But he tricked a fool out of me. <laughs> he bloodied a hole in his shirt and tricked me into thinking he was dead. <laughs> Something is always bad. He frilled up his possum. Anybody could have been a fool. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Sleep, Lana. Might as well be. They ain't gonna do you no good to stay awake. I got something bothering me about you and Buck. What did he do, anyhow? Done stood up and been a man. But what did he do to make that Solomon chase him? Why is he after him, anyhow? Killed a white man who was breaking in on us. Why'd he want to do that? He wanted our farm. We wouldn't sell, so he was fixing to run us off. Done everything he could to scare us off. Poisoned our livestock, burned our barn with our son in it. Your child? My child.
was something falling from that butte up there. Couldn't tell what it was. Thad, shooting stopped up there now. If he'd have won, he'd been out on that rim where we could see him crowing like a rooster. You live? Buck, you gotta get your wife down off this butte. Call down there to Law and tell him you're gonna send her down. Go on. She won't go. You gotta make her go. If you don't wanna get her killed. Buck! Buck Walter! I hear you, Solomon. Give yourself up. Liza won't get hurt, and I'll guarantee you get to stand trial. Too late. Yeah, it's a white man, I fear. Rich white man. You come for us, he gonna get killed. That's only gonna make it worse. Now, come on down. <laughs> How worse? You gonna hang me with two ropes? I sent Thad down. You sneak around the butte, you find him. Howdy. Howdy. Had some shooting. Thought there might be some trouble. There is. We've got a prisoner treat. Solomon Budd, Sheriff of Ledbetter. Oh. Ben Cartwright, Virginia City. My son Joseph. Hey, anyway, get him up on that butte, huh? Yeah. It's gonna be kind of tough getting him down. He's got a prisoner up there with him. I that could be my son, Horse. Could be. He's a white man. Trying to move out. Buck Walter's wife. Now, you can help, but you got to do exactly like I say. I'm going to scatter the posse out so they can see the top of the butte. You with them if you want to come along. Now, we'll start now. No, you're going to come with me. As soon as you get into position, I'll give the signal you begin firing, but don't hit the white man. I'll go up the trail. Cal, follow him. Sheriff, I want to argue. You are arguing. Yeah, well, wait a minute, that woman up there. Now. She's got a rifle, ain't she? Yeah. She's liable to use it. Now, if you get her in your sights, you don't have to pull the trigger. Look, you may be making things out worse than they really are, Buck. As long as you're still alive, there's a chance. Ain't nobody hanging Buck Walter. Buck, your son was killed. You killed the man that did that. Maybe you had a right to do that. You can't tell what a court's going to do. Liza, talk to him. Can't tell him nothing he don't already know. What about you? I'm staying with my man. They're doing a lot of moving around down there, fixing to start something. It's starting. Go on, horse. Get out of here. Oh, man, you can't... I'm done crawling. Life's for men who can live it. Reckon you got strength enough to get her off this butte? Help me get her to my shoulder. I can make it. Get out of here. Boss? Fall down that butte with my wife and I'll kill you.
buffer still stands. Gunfight here? Hang him now, what's the difference? Here, you ain't got a prayer. Ain't got one no how. Last chance. You like yourself now? You go bury him. <laughs> 